Morning folks and welcome back. This video is all about knots. Before I get started, I'd just like to apologize for not putting a video up for a couple of weeks. Um, I've had a, a load of stuff going on. Um, Maggie wasn't very well last, last weekend. I was hoping to get out and film last weekend, but um, unfortunately she, she had a bit of an accident uh, out in the garden and has, uh, has damaged a nerve in her back, which has caused her to lose use of one of her legs. It is on the mend. Um, but uh, you know she's sort of out of action with regards to, to walks and things and last weekend she just needed a bit of care and attention at home really so thus no video and thus no Maggie today. I'm out on a nice little circular walk I can do from my house it's become my sort of lockdown staple really um, yeah it's a nice walk it's sort of five miles I suppose and uh, takes in this nice little pocket of woodland. I get asked quite a lot if I'll do a video on knots. Um, there are loads of them out there on YouTube, really good videos, really good tutorials, a lot better than what this is gonna be. Um, but you know, I do use knots obviously in what I do, setting up shelters, canoeing, things like that. So um, I thought I would put a video together showing you the knots that I use. Before I get started, I thought I'd just go through a little bit of terminology, some of the words I'm gonna be using through the video just so you understand what they mean. When I mention the working end, that's simply the free end of the knot, the end of the bit of rope, if you like. So that's the end that you'll be feeding through and creating your knots with. A bite is a simple loop created at that working end, and a loop is where you cross the cord over itself to create a loop at some point along the line. And finally, an overhand knot, which is obviously a knot in itself, but I'm assuming most people know how to tie one of these. It's sort of the simplest form of knot. There are several different types of cord that I use on a regular basis. The most frequently used is probably paracord. It's really strong, you know, it's reasonably cheap, and I use it all the time around camp for fixing up a shelter, for my tarp, um, guy lines, anytime I need to lash something together. Yeah, it's really good stuff. You can fork out and get the genuine 550 US military spec um, paracord, you know, which is obviously the, the kind of best there is. It has that guaranteed 550 pound braking strain. Um, or you can get the, the cheaper Chinese paracord, which to be honest, for 99% of what you're gonna be using it for would be perfectly adequate and it's a lot cheaper. As well as the seven strand paracord, I also use lighter weight cords. These are made in exactly the same way as the paracord, but this one only has three strands in it. So it's obviously thinner and lighter, still very strong. And this one is a single strand paracord called a micro cord. And finally, I use floating rope. This is a 12 mil or half inch floating rope. And I use this for my painters on the front and the back of the canoe for, for tying it up. And while we're talking about cord, don't forget if you cut it, especially nylon cord, you need to make sure you melt the end with a, with a lighter, otherwise it'll all fray and go horrible. Everybody has their favorite knots. Some people know loads of them and uh, know how to tie them all. Other people just use one or two and make them work for whatever it is they're doing. I have six that I use, some more than others. But the first one I'm gonna talk about is the lark's foot or cow hitch. This can be used really simply if you already have a loop in the end of your line, in the end of your cord. So I'm just creating a loop here by tying a simple overhand knot there. And if you put your finger and thumb through that loop and then go over and pinch together, you'll create that lark's, lark's foot or lark's head or cow hitch. And you can just simply slide that over whatever it is you want to tie to. And uh, that's it, dead simple. Or you can just pass your loop around the tie point and then just pull your rope or cord through and pull it tight that way. I also attach my hammock to my hammock suspension using a lark's foot knot. This thing here is called a drip ring. And this goes between the hammock and the hammock suspension and is a point where water can drip off. So if I just put my continuous loop from the hammock through the uh, drip ring and then over the top and pull, I've got a very quick lark's foot knot there. I attached my whippy sling to the other side in the same way, but because I've already got this on there, I can't use the same technique, so then I have to kind of pull it through on itself like I showed you a minute ago. But that's how I attach my hammock to my hammock suspension. Next is the taut line hitch. This is an adjustable knot, and I use this quite a lot. It's easy to tie. You just come around the back with your working end of whatever it is you want to tie off to, in this case a small tree pass it over the top and pinch it with your finger and thumb. You're then going to take that working end and you're gonna pass it underneath the cord twice behind where you've pinched 
you're going to come in front and you're going to pass it under and through that loop that you've created okay i like to bring a bite through rather than just the loose working end because that makes it a lot easier to untie i use this knot on my tarp ridge line so i can adjust it and get it nice and tight even if it rains overnight and the tarp becomes saggy i can just uh, simply adjust it in the morning and pull it all nice and tight I also use it for my guy lines on my tarp, on my tents, um, you know, it's adjustable. It's a really, a really great knot. Another knot I use on my ridge line is a prussic knot. So I've just created a loop in this piece of cord here by tying an overhand knot in the end. And I'm gonna pass that over and through to create a lark's foot knot like we looked at earlier. Okay, so that is your basic lark's foot. But to create a prussic, you're gonna pass it through again. Okay, so it's basically like a kind of double lark's foot, if you like. You can see that there's now two wraps on either side of where this end of the loop comes through. And what that does is it creates loads of friction on this ridge line here so that it grips you can slide it along by actually moving it like this with your finger and thumb but once that's in place and you try and pull from the side it actually grips really well on that ridge line you can adjust it and it grips adjust it and it grips. This works better when the loop that you've created the prusik out of is a thinner gauge cord to the line that you're actually gripping on. So I've got 550 paracord here, the black line as my ridge line, and then this is the three strand paracord here, and that just tends to grip better. If you use both the same gauge, the same size cord, you can get a bit of slippage. So that is the Prusik knot, and I use this to attach my tarp to my ridge line. I'll either have a carabiner or I'll have a toggle which comes through here, and then I can slip that along and get tension on my tarp on the ridge line. This knot was originally developed for climbing, for climbing up ropes, rope ascending. And you can see how it works. You can shift the knot up and then you can put weight on it. You can move it up a bit further. You can get weight on it and you can climb up a rope that way. It's a really good, strong, adjustable knot. This next knot is really useful if you want to lash two things together. This is the arbor knot or the Canadian jam knot. So I've just tied an overhand knot in the working end of my uh, bit of cord. Then I'm going to tie another one behind it, just loose like this. Pass it around whatever it is you want to lash together and then thread the other end of your cord through the loose overhand knot. And then if you pull those together the two knots will be forced together and they'll constrict. And the more you pull it, the tighter it gets and you have a lashing. That's really good for shelter building. I use it on my bush chair um, to tie the, the sort of support bar, if you like, to the, to the main A-frame and it holds, holds good and strong. Yeah, the arbor knot. So those are some knots that I use around camp. Uh, the next two I tend to use more when I'm canoeing. The first one is the bowline. I use a bowline to attach the painters to my canoe. The painters are just the ropes at the front and the back that I use to stop my boat from floating away. And um, I simply make a loop in the long end of the rope, and then I pass the working end through that loop around the back of the long end, and then back through that loop again, like that. Pull it tight. And it's a really good strong knot, it won't slip and uh, I know that I haven't got to worry about that, um, that coming undone on my canoe when I least need it to. <laughs> there is a way of remembering this, something to do with a rabbit coming up through the rabbit hole around the tree and back down through the rabbit hole again. I seem to remember learning when I was in the Cub Scouts but it's a good knot to know. Yeah, the bowling.
And finally, we've got the clove hitch, which is a constrictor knot. So I'm gonna take my cord over whatever it is I want to tie to, then I'm gonna wrap it over the cord again, okay? Over the top like that. Bring that working end under, and then tuck it through and underneath that wrap. Pull it tight, dress it all up. And that creates loads of friction. So the more I pull on this end here, the tighter it gets and it just holds really well. That's one way of tying it. I tend to use this knot more when I'm canoeing and fastening my boat up to a mooring post, which is open at the top. So there's a much easier way to do it if you can get to the end of whatever it is you want to tie off to. So if you create a loop and then a second loop going in the same direction, so both left over right or right over left, and then pass one underneath the other, you can then slot that over whatever it is you want to fasten to and pull it tight. So those are the knots that I personally like to use. There are hundreds of knots out there and they're good fun to learn. There are lots of really good tutorials out on YouTube, so um, yeah, go and check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.